The diving save is a complex motor task characterized by large forces exerted at push-off generated in a very short period of time, and in many cases in absence of prior knowledge of ball location. Therefore, the starting position and the push-off technique are most likely key factors in diving save performance. However, starting position, and dive side and height dependent leg contributions without prior knowledge of ball location, were not studied before. Therefore, the aims of this study were to document the characteristics of the starting position and to analyze how each leg contributes to the dive towards high and low balls at both sides of the goal, in the absence of prior knowledge of ball location. In addition, total body linear and angular momentum were compared between dive heights and sides. Methods 10 elite football goalkeepers, dominant leg 9 right and 1 left, participated in this study. The participants' level, at the time of the experiment, was as follows, 2 goalkeepers in the Dutch Eredivisie, 6 goalkeepers in the Dutch Eerste Divisie, and 2 goalkeepers in the Dutch Under-17 Eredivisie. Data Collection and Preprocessing For each participant, 2 dives were measured for 2 heights at both sides of the goal, for a total of 8 dives per participant with 2 minutes recovery time between dives. The visual stimulus was produced by a lead board placed at the penalty spot, consisting of four lead lamps indicating the side and height of the ball to save. The balls were suspended one meter in front of the goal line, at two heights from the force plates level. They were attached to a thin rope by a magnet allowing the goalkeeper to hit or catch the ball. A ball was suspended at low height on one side, and the other ball was suspended at high height on the other side, and they were reattached to the ropes after each dive to avoid any anticipation of height and side. A passive marker motion analysis system was used after calibration with an active wand comprising five markers. Trajectory data from 44 markers was captured using 10 infrared cameras at 200 samples. Single markers were attached to different body segments in the form of clusters, the thighs were modeled between the shanks and pelvis, and the upper arms were modeled between the thorax and forearms, in order to obtain a full body model without occlusion of the markers during the trials and limiting the risk of landing on markers. Soft markers were used on areas that are prone to impact at landing, and three single markers were attached to each ball. Two custom-made strain gauge based, 1 by 1 meter, force plates were used to measure ground reaction forces produced by each leg separately at a rate of 1,000 samples per second. Kinematics Timing variables were defined relative to the onset of movement. The instant of contralateral peak force was defined as the instant that the contralateral leg exerted its maximum resultant ground reaction forces. The instant of ipsilateral peak force was defined as the instant that the ipsilateral leg exerted its maximum resultant ground reaction forces. Takeoff was defined as the instant that the vertical compon component of ground reaction forces, summed over legs, dropped below 10% body weight threshold and ball contact as the instant that a shift in position of the ball's markers was detected in any direction. The characteristics of the starting position included stance width knee joint flex ion angle, hip joint flex ion angle and forward center of pressure position. The stance width was calculated as the distance between the medial malleoli and was expressed as a percentage of the participant's leg length. The leg length of each goalkeeper was measured from the palpated greater trochanter to the ground while the subject was standing bare feet. The knee and hip joint angles were defined as the Euler angles of the Schenck anatomical coordinate system relative to the thigh anatomical coordinate system, and of the thigh anatomical coordinate system relative to the pelvis anatomical coordinate system, respectively. Their sequence of rotation was, flexion extension, external internal rotation, and abduction adduction. The forward center of pressure was calculated relative to the calcaneus and as a percentage of the participant's foot length. Total body linear momentum in the vertic vertical and horizontal direction towards the ball, and frontal plane angular momentum time series were calculated from the light signal to ball contact. Results Our results showed that the starting position of the goalkeepers was characterized by a stance with 33 plus or minus 1% of leg length, 62 plus or minus 18 degrees knee flexion and 63 plus or minus 18 degrees hip flexion. 
a small standard deviation for stance width at the starting position might be caused by similarities in the coaching systems at the goalkeeper's clubs. The forward center of pressure was on average located at 75 plus or minus 12% of foot length from the heel. After the light signal, the goalkeepers step sideways with their ipsilateral leg to increase the stance width from 33 plus or minus 1% to maximum values of 88 plus or minus 8% and 77 plus or minus 11% for high and low dives respectively. Repeated measures A and OVAs showed that there was a significant effect of ball height on all variables except reaction time, and all effect sizes were large. Whereas there were no effects of side on any of the variables and no interaction effect. Therefore, the figures in the remainder of the paper show the data averaged over sides to allow for a clear comparison between heights. Peak resultant ground reaction forces was larger for the ipsilateral leg than for the contralateral leg in high dives, but the opposite was true in low dives. Horizontal linear momentum was significantly greater for low dives than for high dives, at ipsilateral peak force and at the instant that the peak value was attained. The vertical linear momentum was significantly greater for high dives than for low dives, at ipsilateral peak force and at the instant that the peak value was attained. In addition, the angular momentum in the frontal plane was significantly greater for low dives than for high dives, at ipsilateral peak force and at the instant that the peak value was attained. The push-off angle formed by the contralateral leg ground reaction forces vector and center of pressure ball vector at contralateral peak force was for high dives and for low dives, whereas at ipsilateral peak force the push-off angle formed by the ipsilateral leg ground reaction forces vector and center of pressure ball vector was for high dives and for low dives. The maximum contribution to the center of mass horizontal as well as the vertical velocity towards the ball was larger for the contralateral leg than for the ipsilateral leg, during all diving save conditions. Furthermore, maximum contralateral leg contribution to vertical center of mass velocity was significantly larger for high dives than low dives, whereas the maximum contralateral leg contribution to the horizontal center of mass velocity was significantly larger for low dives than for high dives, 